Welcome back, everybody, to the Valorant First Strike UMG Close Qualifiers. I'm Taylor Reflections Noble, joined once again by Esports Dog, as well as Simo. We're going into our final series, an important series, obviously, because one uh, will, in fact, not be qualifying for regional finals, but one team will, as it has been all day long. So this will be our last elimination match on stream, at least here for the UMG Close Qualifier portion. It's going to be Luminosity Gaming going against Immortals. Simo, how are you feeling about this series? Well, I'm not, I'm not LG Simo or Immortal Simo, so I think I'm fine. <laughs> I think I can stay impartial. I'm fine. I'm chilling. Uh, but I think this is just a very interesting storyline. You know, having whether or not mm -hmm. Shanks is playing for Immortals. Like, if imagine a world where Immortals qualify and it's with Shanks, and then they don't use him for the major. That's just such an interesting storyline to me, uh, and it's important to just look, look at it, like see, because he almost, they almost did a great job against T1 with Shanks, uh, but it wasn't sure, enough. And, and, yeah. and now here we are. And now here we are. Here we are, Doug. We are here. In fact, how are you feeling about this series, the last series of the day? I'm super pumped to be sending one of these two teams to first strike. Again, this has been months in the making. This has been the, the goal of teams for this entire time. And again, the narrative around Immortals. But I got to tell you, and I don't know... Uh, if Veli out there is watching, but I know he's been a big fan of LG from day one. For them to work themselves to this position is just really impressive. I think for a lot of people, LG was maybe on the radar, but on the fringes of it, they have the potential to be one of the best eight teams in North America. And, and I, again, for a lot of folks, that's insane. It, it definitely is, right? I mean, uh, again, you know, it's been a beautiful, I think, uh, just any in, any portion of the qualifiers, right? I mean, anybody had a chance to kind of make it into the regional finals, and that's kind of been the storyline, right? I mean, look at Moon Raccoons, who just, you know, obviously just exit now the close qualifiers, but uh, a team that was unsigned that came through and just surprised everyone been a beautiful thing for lg it might continue to improve uh, we'll definitely find out as we head into our maps take a look at them right because obviously uh, we only have four to choose from but at least in this case we have bind haven and split lg did in fact band ascent but uh you know for you simo you mentioned bind this is what it uh, comes down to between these two teams why is that yeah they both have a lot of reps on this map um, Immortals only losing bind to, to T1 yesterday, um, but it was a little bit of a closer affair, I think, you know, looking at it big picture. It went to overtime, which was a nail-biter, and T1 managed to, to sneak that one through. So both very proficient on bind. If either mm. team can get the leg up on the first map, then the second, you know, is going to be just as competitive. If it does end up somehow to that third map, Luminosity do not have a lot of reps on split, so we don't know what they have cooking, whereas there's a little bit more from the Immortal side so it really just all depends on how this first map goes, I think, to see if this is a three-map series or not. Well, we're definitely going to find out relatively soon, right? Of course, we have to give our predictions. And I know, Simo, you were very, very proud, right? And you you put it out there for Moon Raccoons. I don't blame you, okay? Looking at the stats, it seemed as if they might have had a chance. But they ended up falling a bit short. Therefore, you do fall down to our levels, okay? So we're all even at five and seven. So this is uh, very much so going to be potentially the tiebreaker. I'm going with the Mortals. 2-0, I think they're going to be able to take this. Uh, you know, I, I look, and, and the reason why, uh, Immortals have just been on fire. I think they have a lot to play for here, right? Uh, you know, they're representing, obviously, Shot Up, who unfortunately, you know, has some things go down. But with Shanks in the mix, it's like that honeymoon phase. He's coming in, he's playing hard, and he's been playing very, very well. But for you, Doug, super curious to hear your prediction. Who do you think is going to end up ahead? Uh, I do think at the end of the day, I have to go with Immortals in 2-1 fashion. And here's the thing. Mm. For, Sh for Shanks, excuse me, joining the roster yesterday as a, as a stand-in, there are a few things that, that really were, while this was a terrible s scenario and terrible circumstance, it really kind of plays out okay for Immortals. And here's what I mean. They lost it a, a duelist, right? It wasn't like mm. losing a Sova or losing an Omen or some or like a Killjoy who has to understand all of the spots to their utility and how they play around the map. Shanks is just really freaking good at entering <laughs> sites and just blowing people up, right? For Immortals is as well as they played with him in a stand-in spot yesterday. I'm sure while there wasn't a ton of time, they put a little bit of time into things today with uh, Shanks instead of Shot Up, at least reviewing film, talking about what are different set pieces that they can have going. So I think while Immortals look good yesterday, we're even going to see a stronger performance out of them today. 
I think we will. But Simo, what do you think? Who are you going with? Are you on? Uh, are you on the limb? Are you going with LG? You going with the Mortals? What do you got? Yeah, I'm, I'm sticking with you guys, Immortals. I think you know what I had seen from there yes from them yesterday, especially against T1 with Shanks in the lineup. Uh, they're just a well-oiled machine. You know, all of the parts working quite well together with or without Shanks, with or without Shot Up. The whole team as a roster works well together, and that is one of the things that is very impressive about Immortals. But I think this series is going to be close. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if we end up somehow in two overtime matches. Like, LG is a good team. I just think Immortals have this beautiful Cinderella story, and for them to make it, for them to make it here now into the top eight would be a beautiful sight for the organization. Well, hey, check it out. First time LG is going to be on mainstream. I know the map is getting loaded up. Let's not forget Shanks into double overtime versus T1 just the other night. The opportunity is there, but it's going to get started. LG versus Immortals. Let's head into Bind Boys. Take it away. Thank you, Reflections. Yes, the last series of the night, two teams fighting for one spot. One of these two squads are qualifying for, for Strike, the big kahuna, the granddaddy of them all, and the other one's going to be going home empty-handed. Simo, I know we talked a bit about the, the predictions and how we were leaning towards Immortals. Who are you watching on the side of Luminosity, actually, to keep things spicy, to keep things interesting? Oh, Thief and Aproto. Like, without a doubt. A proto is nuts. I, but I think uh, LG, similar to Immortals, the entire team works incredibly well. Mata has phenomenal performances from time to time when he pops off on the Sova. A proto, crispy aim. Man's been in the aim lab all day, every day, training in the practice range. The whole team works out incredibly well. So I'd love to see uh, what type of compositions we got cooking up here. Pretty standard stuff, I think, across the board for both teams. It's a mirrored comp. But Immortals, they'll be starting off on the attacking side first. Heavy presence towards A, and not not more of a of an aggressive posturing from Luminosity early on. You see, the Omen is actually just hanging out back in U-Haul, uh, not playing up aggressively, not really contesting the short spot. They're giving up that much distance, and well, Immortals is going to take it. Early push up short here for Immortals, and they're getting aggressive. The paranoia doesn't quite work out, and now as they start to push forward, JC Stanny has got to reload the clip. A thief will take him down. It's traded out by Neptune, and now a 3v2 retake for Luminosity as the B side anchors are coming late to the party. Spike planted. Yeah, they've shown up, but at this point, the spike has been planted. A proto working his way through pipes. Interesting to see that Immortals did not work their way through that and establish themselves to do that choke point. That's a, a heavily contested area of the map. We'll keep a close eye on that as the, as the map goes on. Proto able to take care of Shanks, goes in for the second, and it's Neptune who gives him the business up close oh, and personal. Just one left, oh. it's Mata. He's able to get one, looking for the second. Gonna get tagged up, tagged back. And now it's Mata who's actually on the hunt. He's trying oh. to hunt people down, but he's buying time. Neptune, Neptune. He doesn't believe it. He's just swing. sticking it. Swing. Oh, he goes around. Yes. He gets to kill a 3K and Immortals get on the board first. That's a tough spot. I was listening to Steel's companion stream earlier in the day when he was watching Cloud9 up against T1. And he was saying, Cloud9 always stick to defuse. There's no games. Just rush them down. Just peek. They're always defusing. And in that case, we saw Mata. He didn't have a lot of time left. He didn't have a lot of choices left. And Neptune was able to escape, really run away, sprint away from that engagement. And he ultimately swings at the correct time. It was a little close, I'm going to have to say. But Immortals winning the pistol is a great start. Two Phantoms on board. They want to carry these into the third round. They do indeed No Hot and heavy push up a short this time. Similar positioning on the side of Luminosity, particularly around Stellar and the room he's kind of g giving up here. Uh, across short. Meanwhile, you see uh, on your mini map, it is going to be Mata who's playing a bit further back. Now he's working his way towards A, but from Immortals, at least early on, I like this. No, nothing has really been shown. There's that Cypher cam. We're going to see that a lot, peeking its way into showers, as of course they funnel that way when we see that, or as I say that, but the now we're right right back where we started. It looks like it's going to be another push up a short. Enemy mark. At least Luminosity are ready for it. They see one. Oh, they're going to spot another. And he's going to swing right as that drone dissipates. They're ready. They're ready to get engaged here. Shanks pushing forward. Shanks with two. A player behind Tetris. He's going to get blocked out. One more player in Lamps. The burst classic. Not going to work out. It's down to KZ. And he will be taken down. 
Those phantoms will carry on into that third round. Very interesting. And they get the bonus gold from, sorry, bonus gold. I'm thinking of League of Legends. Bonus credits. <laughs> bonus credits. They get that from the spike plant there. This is the round here for Luminosity to turn things back into their favor. And as you mentioned, they're going to be bringing in a couple of phantoms and they bought some here too. So now the only, if you can say weaker spot, uh, is going to be Gangsta with the Bulldog instead of one of the two marquee rifles in the game. Immortals has a two round lead. Luminosity uh, have been hit a bit here. There's that camera that we were just talking about. The, the, it's an interesting counter. You see this very frequently. Omen smoking that out really negates all of the information that comes from that Cypher camera. Wasn't it against T1 that we saw them really struggle with Immortals shower control? Mm -hmm. I think that might have been the series where Immortals was consistently getting showers control, whether it was the defense or the offensive side. We're seeing something similar again, and it's just, once again, going to be that heavy A hit. They have to worry about the 50 on the right. Oh, Proto is going to yeah. find him, and another lined up shot. There's one more player in the shower, say Proto. The Waffle no. Crosshair is working out, has to reload the clip. Shanks will take him down, but Stellar icing on the cake will take out Shanks. And Luminosity answered back on that third round conversion. And again, it's not like Immortals were rocking Spectres and Stingers because they had some SMGs from the prior round. They had rifles, and a Proto just rips them to shreds. Unfortunately, the clip runs just a bit dry, has to switch to the Classic, and at that point, he loses the fight. But Luminosity was able to clean up and finish up what a Proto had started. A great start for him uh, to the map. Obviously, that last round certainly helped. Uh, but for, for Immortals, we've seen a delayed a short we've seen a hot and heavy a short not a whole lot of attention spread towards b and in the previous round luminosity worked their way and they're doing it again they pushed down b long to get some information to get some real estate a little bit scary for immortals they haven't shown a lot towards that b site and that's why you're seeing kz push up quite aggressively because they haven't shown face there they've just given free orbs to luminosity likely going over towards KZ, who's got the Blade Storm now. But the fact I that they've got so much Showers presence, it's great on Luminosity to push up and get a little bit more ground, even though it's the Eco, to understand, okay, we're always going to expect some form of Showers presence from Immortals. Let's try to read the other side of the map. That is exactly where Immortals end up. As they're rolling in bunches, you see the Cypher is going to be lacking a bit behind. I like this positioning from KZ. Going to be around elbows. Jamo goes up. He's able to get one with the blade. Steve sitting on the sideline for the rest of the round. But again, KZ what? all through the smoke. Are you kidding me? Wow. And that's going to be an upgrade with a Vandal. He's going to sit in the cubby. Spike down. Retake for Luminosity. Edwig going to come through. Spot a wizard in the cubby. Looking for the paranoia as well. Shots are going to be good. It gets traded out. And it's the two... V3, make it a 3v1. Stellar, the last player standing. This is a great comeback round for Immortals. All down to Stellar. Sees where the spike's planted. Planted for B Long. First gun, du first gun duel gonna work out in his favor. Neptune from the side. What a thrifty round here from Immortals. They swap over from that Shower's presence. And even though that early pick goes down, 4KZ, an aggressive jet push onto the B site works out quite well for them. It, it does indeed, and I think a lot of it was KZ dying in that elbow. He was in a really good spot to keep yeah. Immortals at bay, but dropping sure. there really just kind of opens up the site for them, and they, as we saw, were able to take care of business. And again, it was on a thrifty round. There was, the, I think the Sheriff did most of the damage there throughout that round. Immortals here, as we start the fifth round, have three ultimates to work with. We've seen a number of different looks from the attacking side here, and it looks like now we're going to get even another one. I love how how diverse their plays have been early on here. Well, you know, color me surprised when Immortals is in the showers for five rounds in a row now. <laughs> uh, depending on however many players they send there, the Sentinel and the Initiator. And it really sets up a nice A short hit because you've got support from the opposite side, but it's just orb control. They've gotten this for free so many rounds in a row. The fact that um, Gangsta has his ultimate now, Neptune has his ultimate now, they've just been farming those orbs. And Luminosity could have had a little bit more presence towards that B long side to just you know grab some orbs of their own because look at how many ultimates are available for Immortals. Some of those are from kills and some of those are from alt orbs. And now this delayed mid-round A hit is going to be 
It's going to be tough because they know that they've got a little bit more of an easier sight line into the A site, but here it comes. Oh, Seller drops out the paranoia. It's not going to flash anyone up. As you see, Immortals going a bit aggressively. Gangsta with the Hunter's Fury trying to clear some room as Shanks drops. The spike is going to begin oh, to be planted. Yeah, keep a close eye on that flank, folks. He's going to make his way over. Will he be able to get there in time, however? And will it be left unchecked? Thief? Exactly. Doing just that. Yeah, he oh. sucker punches. JMO is able to get one in a second on a gangster. But JC Stanny with three keeps it interesting. Luminosity, however, managed to overpower Immortals. A proto is going to get the defuse and bridge the gap, lead down to one. Yeah, that thief flank really exploited this consistent A site hit. Let's have a look at the replay and the recon bolt. We got to give credit to the support, you know, Mata with the recon bolt there. Finding two players, giving Thief the perfect swing into a short. And now Immortals, hopefully they learn their lesson. I still would like to see that Shower's presence, maybe just the Cypher, leave him over there. We often see a heavy B side hit with a Lurker towards Showers to just catch the rotates off. But Immortals have opted in for just the heaviest Shower presence I've ever seen. But now we're finally getting a look at what their B side hit looks like, or at least their early round B side information fishing. Smoke comes out for a moment. Different camera here. More of an aggressive one. As the cameras are going to spot each other. Meanwhile, Gangsta with the drone working his way up B long. Get some info. Idea of where some of the players are. So at this point, Immortals knows that there's a cipher over by A. They did spot the jet through the drone. So they have some sort of an idea of where the defenses of Luminosity are, but not enough to make a confident play either way. See the smokes coming out. Roomba's gonna be clearing the way. The paranoia once again out of JC Stanny, keeping Immortals at bay for now. We've seen that paranoia quite consistently, but look at that. The teleport back. Stella, Stellar's oh. in a great position for the flank. Does he take out some of those members? The spike's going down, but you've got a, another flank developing from Thief. So even if Stellar falls, Immortals are being pinched in. Unfortunately for LG, they've lost too many members now, and now the flank has been read by IMT. They take out Stellar, but there's still one more remaining. Mata coming in from that heaven side. Shots are crispy. Wow. Shots are going to be good to answer back here for Gangsta. I like the attempt here from Luminosity, but Immortals just held the line and did not let the flanks work out from A short. Spike going to be taken down. Mata may be looking for some exits. I don't think the heroics here are going to be super... Crispy. He's at least going to get one for his troubles. Back away, save that Vandal to the next round. And Immortals now lead by two. When will this A side hit not work? That is my question. When will LG? They've tried the flank. They've tried holding varying different angles. The one round that I think it did work out was with, was when a proto was towards uh, just outside showers, right by that double box. Um, he got a, like a beautiful 4K, but you know that can only work so much, right? So what do LG have up their sleeve to stop these? insane consistent a hits and you even see a proto on that last round put his uh, utility in a slightly different spot he dropped that tripwire in the entrance through a short knowing that that's where they've been going but as you said immortals was just able to get what they wanted out of there anyway not a ton of utility this time around just get one tripwire on the entrance to showers no camera to note either from luminosity you hear the blade storm has been used ever uh, a spicy thing to keep in mind ever uh, an equalizer in situations where firepower might be lacking uh, luminosity still have a good number of ultimates to work with as well i like that smoke to be short as well it's gonna allow kz to get into a good position the boom bot to clear things out paranoia as well to follow out we'll see if kz can get out he cannot that's the blade storm gone and now shanks will lead the charge from the hookah side the rest of the team need to get onto the site the spray through the smoke stellar lands those classic shots mata answering back from the tuna can now it's down to the 3v3 there's gonna be the showstopper coming in for thief he's gonna try to clear out hookah but they back away and the portal's been called so now lg three members strong will retake from the defender spot yeah, Gangsta is going to be the first one there, and the spike is going to follow shortly after. First place, you see him check his pipes. Again, a very important area of the map uh, to control, especially towards this A side. Uh, Neptune hanging out in New Hall. Nothing doing quite yet. You see members of Luminosity all have finally started to show up. No cheeky flank to keep in mind this time from Thief or anything like that. They're all going to be coming in from the same side. Heaven and a Proto. Uh, coming in from the pipes. The smokes are going to be ours. 
remaining. Back. Trade down to Thief. Three fires, one HP. Has one, but there's shock darts and there's a hunter's free. One egg is all he needs. There's the defuse, at least two. Doesn't have time. Safe weapon backs away. And the threat of the Hunter's Fury will pull Thief back. Mortals now lead by three. A solid start for them. They tried to hit that B-side quick. It didn't work. I like that the Thrifty was still enough for Luminosity to keep Immortals at bay from the B-side hit. They couldn't get in fast. You saw um, J-Mo was just stuck in Octagon. He wasn't confident enough to push in. And Shanks didn't get a lot of ground despite having so much Huka control. But uh, I like those. I like those quick rotations over towards the A side. But fortunately for LG, they read it. Just couldn't get the round win. Once, once again, Immortals working their way towards showers. You see a good bit of utility used there this time to ensure that there's safe passage as they fight for the orb control. Something you've mentioned. Uh, a good bit, Simo and LG has not been able to do anything to respond. They get in, they get what they want, and then they rotate away. Meanwhile, the Spike and the rest of Immortals are on the opposite side, waiting, playing a bit more slowly uh, as their teammates are up to shenanigans by A. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'd love to see, like, a double peek from Luminosity into Showers, you know? Just try it out. See what happens on the opposite side, because you've got this Lurk now that can develop either from Neptune alone... Or Gangsta decides to join them. They're always together on that side, gathering information, gathering orb control. Blinding. And this B-side hit is going to be interesting. Shanks, once again, the standard paranoia to get, get hookah control. But no one's home. At least they don't see anyone quite yet. There's a ton of utility. I mean, that bad boy's lit up there. like a Christmas tree. But it looks like Immortals are, want to, are going to want to go that way anyway. They creep their way forward. There is some uh -oh. elbow presence, but yeah, they just go in, they go aggressive from up top. They're able to take out members of LG as they're just down to two. Thief drops as well as Neptune lights up. The kill feed Stellar, the last one alive. He's in hookah, but he's severely outnumbered. He's going to drop as well. A 3k on the round form. Immortals continue to pile it on on the attacking side. You know, early rounds, we saw a little bit of aggression from Luminosity towards B-Long. They were looking for some of their own orb control, tried to get a Blade Storm or a Showstopper on Thief and KZ, respectively. I'd like to see that on the flip side towards that Showers because they all, Immortals, like, always, always. And what's the harm in denying orb control from, from Immortals? What's the harm in that? There, there isn't. There truly isn't. You gather information. Maybe you smoke it off. Maybe you pre-fire spray through the smoke. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. We'll see now. It's the eco here for Luminosity. Poised aggressively into the cubby. How much value can Stellar get here as the Owl Drone does spot him out? He's going to try to push forward. Not going to work out while the rest of the team will start to wrap around. No, no Vision Striker shenanigans this time around. Immortals are just going to work their way in. A Proto is going to be flashed off. Oh, and he's getting pushed in from both sides. He is able to get one, but Neptune trades it out. The spike has been planted as the Neural Theft is going to give away everything. Gangsta drops as well. It looked dicey, but so far, Immortals hold fast yet again. They've just been so dominant on the attacking side. See, Illuminosity don't have answers. They can't stop a nosebleed at this point, much less Immortals. Yeah, I mean... I'd probably take this matchup over a nosebleed any any day of the week. I, I don't think I've ever had a nosebleed in my life. Ever? So I, I I I don't think I'd I don't think I'd want that option. Wow. Um, but for Immortals, you have to be very happy about how this attacking half is going. Bind, yes, it's, you know, just marginally attacking favored for some teams. But you know, once we move on to that defensive side, I think Immortals aren't going to slow down anytime soon. It'll all, of course, boil down to that that first initial pistol and how that continues. But I'm liking this look yep. from LG. Finally adapting, gathering a little yep. bit of information. But for the first time, you actually see Shanks over here towards that shower side. That is new for Immortals. Well, yeah, but look at why they brought him over. They've known that the or that the ultimate orb has been easy pickings the entire time, knowing that they want Shanks to get that showstopper. Of course, they know it's there. They're just going to send him over there. They get it. And even with the operator presence from Luminosity, Immortals just play so well around the cages from Neptune to give them room to get in there and get what they need. Now that Showstopper becomes a very important variable in this equation for the rest of the round. See the push in. We're going to have the Tailwind from the Octagon side. Showstopper from the Hookah side. 
It's Decimation. Gank's still gonna find two. They at least answer back temporarily. There's a player on site, and the Blade Storm will find him, not the showstopper. Down to the 2v3 retake. Doable for LG. Now it's a 2v2, but both duelists are left. And guess what? Oh. See you later. I'm gonna portal all the way to the A side. Shanks has to be careful. Shot's gonna be good, and now it's a 1v2. I like this from LG. Now they've got a shot. Spike going down. 1v2. Can JMO do it? You mentioned he has the Blade Storm. Keep a close eye on that. Oh no. Oh, the timing. Unfortunate for JMO. As Stellar's just able to take care of him. He had the chance to do something there, just wasn't able to get to safety in time. Luminosity are able to stop Immortals this time around. They're going to get the Diffuse and put up another round on the board. I think there was also a quick portals play from Stellar and KZ. They hopped in and they flanked from the Hookah side. And then, of course, since the push didn't quite work out for Immortals, they, I mean, they could have planted and Shanks could have played passively behind the Tuna Can. Um, but I like the attempt. I like the effort. And I'm glad that Luminosity finally managed to stop some of that bleeding. With two rounds remaining, what po potential score lines can we see? It's hard to tell considering the economy. Well, it's actually, it's not that great for Immortals. You'd expect it to be a little bit more convincing winning four in a row. Uh, but it's doable for Luminosity to maybe thwart it this round right here. Once again, the battle for information around showers. The cages are going to go up, much like last time. Ginks is going to use that drone and get some info. Push back members of LG. And again, that orb is free for the taking. Immortals do have the Hunter's Fury to keep in mind as well. Should they choose to avail themselves of that resource, Luminosity have plenty to work with on their side as well. They're going to be working their way towards Hookah. At least for now, you see the ultimate has been used. If he sticks it, no, he just goes in for info. There's nobody going down belong. They know that much because everyone else is stacked up towards uh, Hookah. Now they're rotating away, however. They don't have that same utility that they invested in that last round. Immortals committed the Blade Storm and the Showstopper to that quick B hit. Uh, but now Luminosity is still very confused where Immortals are. We understand that it's going to be the A short push now as the shots come oh. through and misses the Paranoia to try to help out. Hunter's Fury to layer that on top. But they might just hop into the portal. Oh, oh Neptune, crispy shot onto KZ. But it still ends up left. down to a 3v3 retake. Hunter Fury is going to be used by Mata in response as the spike goes down. He was able to get JC Staney, but just a hair too late. The spike has been planted. As you see, members of Immortal start to assume their post plants. Neptune drops. It's just going to be down to Genks. He has plenty of health, plenty of armor to work with. But he's got to find a way to get past the defenses. Mata takes care of Gangsta. They're going to get the Diffuse. Luminosity are starting to work their way towards a 7-5. It's a good retake for Luminosity. They managed to come in from varying angles. I believe Thief to hop through the portal from B long. And Mata went the old way around. That gives him a lot of different angles to work with. Solid retake from Luminosity. Immortals. Economy is not looking too great as I as I had identified in that last round. And this is a great opportunity for KZ to use his op. We'll see where he ends up positioning it here. He has that advantage. Oh, but he doesn't opt to go in for it. He does have the blade storm. Oh, he does buy it back. But he does have the blade storm as well if he wants to get aggressive early. Once again, mortals, the old tried and true showers presence. But this time, as we've seen for the past couple of rounds, passive play towards this B side. A different angle from KZ as well. As he looks down B long, there is going to be a JMO just on the other side. KZ's moving. KZ delivers the shots anyway. JMO out for the rest of the round. That's what you like to see from LG. Finally, some of that aggression that we wanted to see come out from them, and it works out in dividends towards B long. Now it's just going to be what Immortals have been doing for the first kind of quarter, the first part of this half. The standard A short. A hit. There's three members here. They're holding on. A Prado is going to be the first line. The Paranoia pulls, pushes two members off of lamps, and they'll actually back all the way behind the APC. Now Neptune's coming through. Oh, Headshot, wow. and they're just going to decimate them one at a time. Luminosity, both duelists left. Here comes the retake for LG. I, just, I love that Paranoia because it forces Luminosity into a terrible situation. Either they try to stick it or they're pushed back, right? And Immortals is able to get all that room. But Thief, meanwhile, is just ripping Immortals to shreds. KZ has the Blade Storm, but he's going to get dropped. JC Staney with three on the round. Immortals take the first half, 8 4. Switching sides. That's a good half here for Immortals. Now we'll see what this first pistol looks like. It's an important one for Luminosity to win. 
if they want to be a little bit more competitive, keep it a little bit closer. But Immortals definitely hot off the press. You know, I think the main story here for Immortals is the substitution for Shot Up. Shanks coming in and he's filling some big shoes. Not necessarily having the game of a lifetime here, but he's doing exactly what his team needs to do. I was watching, shout out to Penguin. Uh, I was watching his uh, companion stream earlier today. And, and as you had identified on the pregame, He's filling a duel. He's fulfilling a duelist role. If he was like a cipher and he had to anchor a site, he'd have a little bit more difficulty knowing what the communication like was within the team. But playing a duelist, just go in and you get the job done, or you don't. Um, so he's been filling in some big shoes here for Immortals. We'll see how they defend this B short push. The classic Roomba. It's destroyed. That means that there's hookah presence from Immortals. There is, but it looks like they're gonna want to push into it anyway. Shanks, one of the first ones there. Members of Immortals are starting to rotate over through the spawn, at least primarily Neptune for now, as things have kind of come to a standstill. You see the smokes are going to come out. Shank's still there. JMO up close and personal with the frenzy, able to get Whoa. two, and he's going to dash away to safety. Not able to get the third, but Gangsta with the shock dart is able to take care of Mata Neptune. Wow. Yes, the rest of Immortals just continue to mow down Luminosity. It wasn't just on the attacking side. The defensive side looks pretty dang good, too. Yeah, that box was rough. And normally there's creative ways uh, to reveal information to the attack in Hookah. And usually what you do is like Boombot goes in, you've got a player holding the line to that double box outside the portal, and then the other player uh, hides in the 50, right? But this time, they've just got a player crouching behind the box, and they don't anticipate it, and the paint shells worked mm -hmm. out quite well to do a little bit of chip damage. Um, solid stuff from Immortals. And now it is their force buy. They should be able to take this one 10 to 4, once again, Luminosity looking towards this B-side once again. Yeah, it's interesting to see Neptune has swapped the map. He had a ton of he had some utility and presence over by A. This time he's worked his way towards B. He's got suggests that there could be plenty of news over by B, and that's exactly where Luminosity is set up. The spike is yeah. going to be towards who, or towards Long, so you got to keep in mind there's the possibility for a teleplay at the very end. Typically, you'll see teams have some info by A, uh -oh. but not the case this time. This is certainly where they're going to want to go. Proto is able to take care of Neptune early on wow. as the rest of Luminosity funnel onto the map. Immortals is now going to be showing up, but they're all going to be coming in from one side. Furthermore, Luminosity have aggressively taken that elbow control so they can anchor onto that. They are going to back off, however, and give Immortals a bit more room to work with. They're all going to be coming in from that elbow side. Some of the members will double back and go through the standard choke point. Gangsta He's got a tall task here with Shanks. They got to make sure they clear all the possible angles. Boombot's definitely going to hurt for Luminosity here, but they've already started off hot. Now the push starts to come oh, through. It's wow. traded one after another, but Luminosity are falling apart at the seams. It's all down to a Proto. Tries to get that classic burst to work out for him. It does not. You know, I thought for a moment there that that retake was going to be very difficult for Immortals. There's a lot of smokes down, a lot of utility, great angles set up from Luminosity in the post plant. Um, but again, the weaponry just not there. You know, I think if they had anything better than the pistols that they had, they would have had a little bit of a better uh, better time. But uh, that's pretty much the best case scenario for the second round conversion. You lose two members or you knock down two members from the Immortals economy. They got to play with some weak stuff moving into this one. And now you can really exploit what you think is the weakest site to hit, which it does feel like for Luminosity, they're thinking it's that B site. I, I do wish we had seen LG keep control of Elbow there. I understand they didn't have the best weapons, but more presence there would have reduced the opportunities, the options for Immortals. Either way, the round does go in their favor, a six-round lead here. Uh, and once again, Neptune this time is going to be over towards B. Meanwhile, the rest of Immortals is going to be pushing it aggressively through A. That is such a strange game plan for Immortals. They've given up a lot of control of the A site. Now A Proto is going to find a little bit more space to oh work boy. with. Two headshots or Crispy. Does he find the third? Yes, sir! Give it to him. Now the A site's wide open. He's just going to hold on here, but as the rest of the team have already worked their way up B short, Gangsta tries to find a little bit more damage, but it does look like LG will have a redemption round here on their force up. What a strange round. Neptune uh, looks like he's going to stay safe here as all of the Luminosity are over by A and they get the spike down. Oh, he may, I mean, he might hunt this thing out. He's going to spot one. 
But again, doesn't have a ton to work with. Has the Spectre. He's going to get tagged up and pushed back down to 44 uh -oh. health. <laughs> and they swarm him. They push him in from a couple of different angles. Steve is able to deliver the final blow and take him out, however. Enemy down. This is just so good for me, Prado. Um, and I think he also, you know, taken taking a page out of Immortals book, having a little bit of Shower's Presence, but most Cyphers on the attack have Shower's Presence, right? It was a little strange to see that kind of be a little bit lackluster for Luminosity on their defensive side, but it's good to see that they're picking up that, that same vibe, that same energy on their own attacking half, and Aprado just finds so much value after that A short mayhem uh, where they pushed up aggressively. So I think Immortals were looking for a little more, but let's pay attention to the round at hand. Luminosity paying a little bit more passively towards the hookah side, maybe seeing if anyone's looking for that orb control towards that long side. But on the flip side, Immortals, they still want that showers control, and you'll see them set up at least a player there to hold on and see if anyone pushes through. Mata using the drone to get some information around B as members of Luminosity Here. rotate over that way as well. You see a couple of pinks coming out. There is a ton of utility again from Neptune. He continues to anchor down this site. There's also plenty of presence around the elbow area. So Immortals are in a really good spot here to fend off this B push. If they decide to go that way, the smoke is going to come out to keep the spawn area uh -oh. blind. Neptune and a Proto are able to get a kill apiece. I and now exactly. Immortals are starting to come over this way. They still have some presence though. The Neural Theft has been used as Gangsta is able to, able to take care of KZ. Mata still kind of looking around. This has just been so patient from Immortals. Spikes being planted. Spike planted. Edwig used to clear out the elbow. But it's a 3v4 retake for Immortals. Hunter's Fury as well can be used to try to clear out any specific angles, and that's exactly what we're seeing. But he's paranoid, does finally end up getting tagged by it. But this one, remember, and he tags him too. JC Stanny will pick up some of that slack, take down Stellar, and Immortals now they lead by six. What a solid round from them in the retake. It was a little bit disadvantageous for Luminosity. But I think you had highlighted it was a slow moving push that they needed to kind of speed up a little bit more. And once again, giving up some of that elbow control. KZ needed to come out big. There was a 1v2 once he threw down the smoke and he had to come out on the other side. But there's no way he could have known there was two players in elbow, right? He just kind of had to hope that he was going to win that challenge. Right. And now, Mortals, they're feeling good. Six rounds is what Luminosity needed. It's an uphill battle for them. And once again, they'll try their hand again at some early B site presence. I, I really liked how how patiently, how calculated Immortals played uh, that chaos that, that went down on B. But look, again, they have swapped where things are. The Cypher Neptune is going to be over by A this time around, and it's just going to be leaving Gangsta as the, the main contact point over by B, and he's playing off the site. Meanwhile, over by A, JMO and JC Stanny are able to take care of two on the side of Luminosity, just down to meager resources for LG as the spike just now is getting picked up. Yes, this is a little bit of a scary sight here for LG. Around, they would have loved, loved to mm. find some sort of redemption arc. That A site, too difficult to penetrate. They've been hitting this B site just over and over and over and over and over again. That's not a shock dart that you would have wanted either. Maybe trying to clear out the tuna can. Psych, sorry, I thought he was trying to clear out the cubby, but that's fine. Recon bolt, JMO. Oh, avoids it. And the paint shells, they're at least going to get onto the site. But it was a little bit slow moving at first. Now the spike's going down. Once again, the 4v3 making the 3v3. They're finally looking for oh, that wow. elbow control and they find it. It's a 2v2 and Immortals oh. are late to the party. They are. It's just down to JC Stanny. He's weak. And he's, he's gone from bad to worse. He's eventually going to get cleaned up. Didn't have very many options uh, or health to work with. Luminosity are able to also preserve a couple of ultimates to go into the next round. They've got four to work with here. So keep a close eye on that obviously can make dr have a drastic implication on how the round plays out. Meanwhile, for Immortals, financially less than ideal circumstances. Neptune is going to bring in the Stinger. You imagine some Spectres across the board for things like a Gangster there at 3,900. He can buy the rifle and armor, but that's it. Opting to go for utility instead and a Sheriff and light armor. So Immortals not going to have a ton uh, of, of punch to work with here. Luminosity sitting pretty here. Wow. The fact that a Tailwind was used because of a Sheriff, that's crazy. KZ did not want his head chopped off. Mata will find a flying jet 
take it down. JMO will sit out the rest of the round. Early on, we saw Mortals five stack or four stack towards this B site, but have since kind of split up their resources a little bit more. And for the first time in a long time, Luminosity are looking towards the A site. That's unfortunate for JC Stanny. Some of the members will pull off. And at least this presence towards B long hasn't been convincing enough for Immortals. They're going to double back all the way towards the A site, and we're likely going to see not even a retake happen for Immortals. They're going to fight for this site on their eco. Again, Luminosity pack a heavier punch, and they have plenty of ultimates to work with as well. If Immortals can somehow pull this off, it's going to require Herculean effort. LG creeping their way forward. There's a smoke that's going to be coming out from Pipes. Steve goes in. He's paranoid, but it doesn't matter as he continues to play aggressively on D D Dancing wow. with Gangsta. Gangsta finally wow. drops. Wait, Neptune everybody. does as well. Immortals just down to one. I mentioned it would require some sort of a deity type response from Immortals in order to keep them at bay. And well, they come up just a bit short. Luminosity are able to take the second round in a row. I'm actually really happy that they didn't use a lot of their ultimates because now yes. they can yeah. kind of save it for a rainy day. And there's a couple of days where I can imagine they want to use it. It's 11 to 7. They can use it to secure this round if they want. This is the gun round and Immortals are really popping deep into their pockets. Op here for J-Mo and he's going to be peeking down B-Long. Likely going to find Gangsta. We'll see how the play ends up running out. But Shower's Control on the opposite side. And once again, Luminosity. Early pressure towards B-Short and found... I like that they keep moving Neptune uh, around, this time again playing towards A. Shanks is one point away from having that showstopper, so we'll keep a close eye on that. Meanwhile, Luminosity leaning towards Hookah. They've got, or excuse me, Immortals has three members uh, on the site, and on the site proper, not playing off-site. They want to fight for control of this. Thief is able to get Stany early on. The fact that they don't have a Elong split is actually very beneficial for JMO. I was about just I was just about to say that that op shot was gonna be beautiful. He was able to have a great sightline into Hookah. But LG just burst onto the scene. It's all down to Gangsta, who's a little late to the party. Oh, shock tart kill. That's kinda huge. Can he turn this 1v3 around? There's a player pushing through elbow. But a Prado backs off. Now the spike's gonna be planted. They know that he's there. They've definitely heard that shot for sure. Um and now this 1v3, how expensive can he make this for LG? He's got a drone. There's a chance, but I like the positioning that Luminosity have taken here. It kind of forces Gangsta to take disadvantageous trades, but somehow Gangsta was able to isolate that one. Gets what? the second with the jumping classic, but there was not enough gas in the tank to pull off the third. It was dicey at the end, but Luminosity is able to take that round as well. Have a look at that quick replay because I on ultimately think when when he sees when Stellar sees Gangsta, Thief should have swung yeah. way earlier. Thief should have swung way earlier. Thankfully, a proto does not let that clutch go through. That's a uh, application denied. Try again in a couple of weeks. Immortals down to their eco once again. Luminosity, they're slowly climbing back after a difficult first half. Their attacking side has had some better looks, but this is their first A hit. In a while, Immortals on the eco. Pistol stacked, weapons stacked. Let's see if they can hold the line with a couple of ultimates here. Much like we saw a couple of rounds ago, they've left Gangsta alone over by B and head best heavily towards A. And fortunately for them, that's where the push is coming from. You hear a couple of Hunter Furious trades out as Gangsta is able to get one. But LG with the guns are able to take care of business as they get three. Gangsta still alive through all this as Immortals is just down to two members left. The spike is going to go down. Shank's still holding down this U-Haul area. They've got a chance. One enemy remaining. It's all down to Shank's. The newest addition to Immortals. Shock dart to the dome. Definitely going to feel that one in the morning. Luminosity now trailed by two. This is going to be a round defining moment for Immortals. They had so much steam, especially after the second half. Then they won the pistol. Then they got that second round conversion. But since then, haven't really been able to hold off the threat of Luminosity on this attacking side. And it's ultimately been that B hit that has just been difficult to keep them at bay. They've tried different looks. Presence to be long. Slight hookah presence. Maybe a little bit more hookah presence is required. For Luminosity, once again, it's that early B site presence, but I like that the spike, well, I thought that the spike located over on the opposite side was just going to be like a late round 
rotate to A. Now nah, they're committed to this. And you see Immortals also answering back, sending maybe two members, maybe, maybe two over towards the B site. They want to hold this if they can. Again, playing on the site, not necessarily looking for the retakes. They're certainly going to get their chance as the smokes come through to keep information out of Hookah. There's the showstopper, goes a bit wide, but the guns from Thief are exactly what the doctor ordered. Mod is able to get one as well. Thief goes in aggressively, able to take care of JMO. Swings, but Gangsta is on the other side of the smoke and drops him. Immortals down to two members left as Luminosity managed to get the spike down. Gangsta from a less than ideal position. But the nice thing, if there is a silver lining here, is that Immortals was pushing in from two fronts. But Luminosity, again, are able to take another round. I believe that six in a row or something insane like that, Luminosity have arrived. Five rounds in a row. And once again, we're back to this eco position for Immortals. It's just been difficult. That B-side hit has been so difficult for Immortals to stop. You know, I think maybe what we can see from Immortals is a, some sort of buddy system play in Hookah. That's actually what they're setting up right now. Um, where you try to take out the Boombot early, you leave a player in the 50, and you hope that they find some success. See if it does. LG, a little bit more split. Passive play towards the A site, and it might give a little bit more space for Neptune to gather some information. Um, but for the moment, Luminosity is kind of biding their time. They're on the precipice of catching up. They don't really need to risk anything. Really patient there from Shanks. I don't think he's been spotted. Either very well played to keep that ace in the hole uh, covered up, at least for now. Luminosity are starting to rotate back towards A. We talked about how successful they've been on B. Immortals respond, and they adjust. But of course, as they do that, Luminosity pulls a string on them, and they're working their way towards A. Immortals are starting to invest a lot as they've sent three back towards A. This is, this is still going to be difficult for Immortals to keep up. I like this position from Neptune. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got to get out of there, though. He's in a little bit of trouble. The team's coming in from behind. Gangsta. And now we're also seeing the wraparound from Shanks. Mata's got a good spot. Oh, but the Bucky chips him away. Left. Doesn't take off Shanks. But still, 3v3. Pain shells to push him back. JC standing with the Crispy Sheriff. One more member still on the site. That's going to be a great frag there from KZ. Down to the 2v2. This is a lot closer than anticipated, but the spike still hasn't spike. been picked up. Now it'll be picked up. Guess who's there? Bucky for Shanks. Finds the trade. Down to the 1v1. Gangsta with the range. And the thrifty round for Immortals. What a setup from the defense. And as you just heard, that's going to bring them to match point. Immortals hadn't been able to do much of anything, really, for the last five rounds. But in, in that fashion of all things, that's when they're able uh, to pull it off. That was desperately needed from a momentum perspective. Financially, they're going to have a good bit to work with here as well. JMO is buying all the way down to broke. Uh, as it looks like we're down to just a few seconds before kicking this bad boy off. Again, Immortals here trying to put Luminosity away on bind. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Back to that B setup. Less hookah presence this time, which is what normally what the setup looked like in Immortals. They're fighting for this orb. Now shots are going to start to come through. Mata's traded. There's still a player there. Paranoia comes through. KZ has space to work with. Burst Classic doesn't work. JC Staney finds the frag, but now they're going to start to hop through hookah. The rest of Immortals need to arrive shortly. But oh, I love this. Luminosity are pulling back. LG Thief is going to be looking for the cross. Op in here. Op in sight. JMO doesn't land the shot, and they'll back away. They'll reset, and we'll see how this a side hit ends up working out. There's a camera there, there's tripwires there, and there's Gangsta, who proved to be a thorn in the side of Illuminosity last round. Here we go, folks. Illuminosity. Not very many options left here on the attacking side. The blast is going to come through. Gangsta is going to be pushed back through U-Haul. He's going to have to retreat to safer space. The Stellar's able to get one. The op out of JMO keeps Luminosity back. Thief drops. The Proto has managed to get a, a good bit of real estate through U-Haul. And the spike is going to go down at the hands of Stellar. Luminosity don't have as much personnel. If they can get a kill, you can use the Neural Theft to give away 
all of the post plants or uh, yeah really all the positioning uh from immortals but that's much easier said than done immortals still trying to hold things at base stellar's able to get one jc standing with three on the round a proto oh. tries to hold on tries to stand strong but it's the 4k heroics from jc standing that's gonna give immortals a one map lead Defenders. solid start here for immortals but it's not over yet. This is the best of three, and there's still two more maps in the tank. Immortals clear a bind, 13 to 10. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be throwing to a quick little break. And when we come back, can LG take Haven? You don't want to miss it. We'll find out after this.